<laughs> you're like, well, okay, got it. Guess I had the same preach both, huh? <laughs> Don't leave, I'm not just joking. <laughs> that was good singing. <clears throat> Man, I'm telling you, Mitch and I were talking about this this afternoon. Rini still got it. She makes that piano ring, boy. Well, I mean, that's good. <clears throat> that is great. Good, good picking. She's the man. Her name would be Jerry Lee. No, no, that was, that was good. Well, you can't keep from getting old, but you don't have to act like it. You know what I mean? Well, we appreciate all of you tonight, and uh, glad that you're here. Glad we've got some visitors over here and back here. We're glad to have you all, and uh, just good to see you again, and good to have you in the service, all of you, <clears throat> and all you folks that come all the time. We're glad to have you, okay? All right, if you got your Bibles tonight and for a few moments, uh, one thing about my preaching, uh, there's one thing you'll like about it. It don't last long. <laughs> I've heard people complain about preachers preaching too long. I've never yet heard one of them complain about somebody only preached 30 minutes, 20 minutes or so. I never have. <clears throat> Nobody said that wasn't long enough. All right, the 25th chapter of Matthew, first through the fifth verse. We're a very familiar story, and this is the words of Jesus, not my words, but his words. <clears throat> I'm just passing them on. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. <clears throat> they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their lamp vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Well, they'd been told that somebody was coming. They had had that word. They had the news. So while they waiting on him to come, I want you to notice that not only did the bridegroom have oil in their lamps, it said they took oil in their vessels. They took more just in case it took longer for him to come. They took more. We can't get too much oil in our vessel because Jesus is coming back. And if I had a title tonight, it'd just simply be like a road sign that you've saw many times. Prepare to meet thy God <clears throat> because everyone that's living doesn't matter, creed, color, age, race, what, you're going to meet God. Somewhere along the way, we're all going to meet God. So the thing is, we need to prepare to meet our God. Because if we're not prepared, then it's going to be a sad time for us to face Jesus Christ unprepared. There's people in the Bible who did that. Now, I remember back when I was a boy and on the farm, we didn't have electricity. We had kerosene lamps, and we would use those for light. And we thought that was great because that's all we had. And always had to keep them trimmed and the wick and everything, you had to blow them out just right so that the kerosene didn't go down the wick and burn and explode the lamp and so on. It takes care to even to keep a kerosene lamp burning. It takes some labor. It takes some work. You've got to be on guard. You can't just light one up and go off and leave it and say it's going to be all right. You have to put kerosene in it. You have to put new wicks in it. And then you have to guard it that it doesn't explode when the wick wears low. And I think the church should have a longer wick maybe than what it's got. I think maybe it should have more oil than what it's got. Now, Jesus told them, he said, uh, you're a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. He said, don't light a candle. And the, who lighted a candle and put it under a bushel? Now, I thought a long time what that meant. I thought about a bushel basket. And I thought, why would you put a little candle under a bushel basket? So when you find out something and you don't know what it means, find out somebody smart enough to tell you what it means. Uh, <clears throat> study it, look up. Well, I found out what a bushel was called 
concerning this, uh, this candle. A bushel was a ceramic or clay, little, a little cup-like, a little big. And when they would leave, and rather than blow out all the candles, this is all they had, is the candles. And rather than blow them out, they knew they were dangerous to leave that way. They could fall over, they could catch things on fire. And so what they did, they didn't, when they left them unattended, they made sure they were safe. Now you know what? You have to have enough oil in your lamp when that you're left unattended and you're not in church, but you're out with the world and you're in the midst of everything. And some of the things that tempted you, some of the things that had you by the neck and had you by the throat and threw you down when you were a sinner, that sometimes you have to be around. It's just there. And so when you're there, you need to have enough light and need to have enough oil to get you through that which is the Holy Spirit of God, so you can stand in the midst of tribulation through temptation and at all and still be prepared to meet thy God. Now this bushel that they had, they took that and they put it over the candle. It had a little hole in it. It didn't give out light, uh, you know, very little, but it had a bushel over it. You couldn't see it from outside and so on. But it kept it safe. It didn't burn the house down. It didn't burn everything up around it. And when they came back and they wanted the light again, they simply took the bushel off and there was the light of the candle. And so therefore tonight, when it says don't put your candle under a bushel, it means don't put it under there and leave it. Don't hide it because there's no light. Let it shine before men that they might see your good works and then glorify who? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'm not preaching tonight to be glorified. I'm preaching tonight that uh, the good works of God that I might glorify my Father which is in heaven. If you're a singer tonight, don't sing for any other reason except to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Don't worry about where your song is on the chart. Don't worry about where it's number one, number two, or the last. Th worry about what God thinks about the song you're singing and where you're singing it. If you're going to preach, don't worry about pats on the back. Don't worry about uh, being flooded over with gifts and all that sort of thing. If you preach for the glory of God, God will take care of you. He will dress you. He'll feed you. He will bless you. And he'll take care of you. And you don't have to worry about anything else because God will let you have his blessing because you're telling his good works and you're glorifying God and you're sitting in the background and you get embarrassed a little bit when people start bragging on you because you don't want that to go to your head but you want the joy of God to go to your heart. I'm here tonight because I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm getting ready to meet the Lord. I'm getting ready to meet God. You say, preacher, you think it's coming very soon. I don't know, but I know one thing. I'm 82 years old, and not many people live through 80s and some in their 90s, and not very many live to see 100. I know that some now, between now and not very long out in the future, that I'm going to meet God, whether he comes back or not. But I want to be ready both ways, don't you? Amen. You might be 40 years old tonight. 20 years old, and you may meet God long before I do, but they see you got to always be ready for an hour if you think not the sun.